Alors bonjour euh, à nouveau. Good Il va être temps de passer à table. It's time to uh, partake of a meal. On va attendre juste quelques petites secondes we'll puisque ça ne nous a pas échappé. Because there is one person who's missing at the table today. Voilà, on est uh, on est au complet et so, je vais évidemment everyone is now present and I shall start by introducing our guests uh, for lunch. On the far right, those who had to provide in the budget for all sorts of things like marrow, uh, bone marrow and other delicacies, Sidonie Dumas, Olivier Dalbos. To the right of Sidonie, a man with wonderful taste and a master who has a three Michelin star cook. He has the wonderful title of gastronomic title in the credits, Mr. Pierre Gagnier. Next to him, who needs no introduction, the person who got uh, the Best Actress Award in 2010 for Copie Confond. Perhaps this film could have been called Le Festin de Juliette, Juliette Binoche. Not far from her, on her right, an actor very present with three films in the official collection uh, selection this year and Best Actor Award for the pianist Benoit Maginel. And in the middle of uh, these two actors at the center of the table, the person who was uh, hard at work uh, behind the ovens and who declares his love for French culture, Tran An Hung, the director of the film. As you know, it's team work. He could not have finished his film without this very close cooperation with the artistic director of the film, who joined us, Ms. Tran Yang Ke. Before I give you the floor, I'd like to get the discussion going with the first question to Tran An Hung. Your film celebrates two arts, the art of love and the art of cooking. Is it a merger between these two loves that uh, wanted you to that led you to adapt this uh, novel written in Switzerland in the 20s? Yes, absolutely. I wanted to adapt the book. I drew uh, very free inspiration from it. In the book, there are some magnificent pages on uh, the art of cooking and uh, food. I've told uh, a story which actually precedes uh, the book. It's a tale of uh, love between Eugenie and Dodin. I wanted to strike a balance in my film between these two things. I wanted to uh, depict a parallel story where you also focus a lot on the art of cooking. We have a first question here. Hello. The question will be in English, if it's okay for you. Mm. Yes. Would be fine. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Elena from Uzbekistan. So I'm from Asia, as you are. And for me, it was a real manifesto of uh, interculturality, if you want. So a connection between Europe and Asia. Because when I, when I first saw the first screen, first uh, picture, I thought it's in Asia. <laughs> <laughs> and Juliette is going to interpret somebody from from our lands. So it was really great and very important for me from this point of view of interculturality. So my question is uh, to the director and to both ac actors interpreting the first characters, was this intentionally? Did you think about these connections with Asian poesy or Asian art or Asian pictures? something that really circulates in your film, f for me. Thank you. Um, no, no, I, I really want to, to make a very French movie. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, something that is uh, in the spirit, I mean. Uh, so that's why I have never, you know, thought about 
uh, doing something related to Asia. But in fact, in the movie, there was one detail uh, is when, uh, when Dodin peeled the skin uh, out of the, you know, the, 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 the feet of the chicken. In fact, in France, uh, we did it with the fire. Uh, but in Asia, we did it with hot water. That, that was uh, the, the only thing that was related to, uh, to Asia. <laughs> Of course, I, I asked uh, him the, the permission to do it, you know. <laughs> um, good morning. Um, what I felt that was very um, special from whom in preparing the food it was to always have a special relationship with the vegetables, with what we were cutting, what, with the details. and almost having a, a light-hearted feeling. And that's something I forgot, you know, when I cook them quite quick. But suddenly everything had to be conscious and special. And in that way, I felt he was very uh, refined, like we can feel in the Asian food. There's a, there's a lot of spirit inside of the food, the way you cut it, the way you prepare it. And there's that as well in the French cuisine, but as an actress, I had to learn that. So each time I was going too fast, Hung would say, no, 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 you slow down, be with what you're doing. And it's really what I felt is that you have to make the spirit go down into the matter, and the matter has to lift into the spirit. And Duda is the representation of the conceptor of the spirit of, you know, the conception of the recipe as Eugenie is very much into, okay, putting everything down into the matter. So I think this um, East and West um, wedding is very much between uh, Benoit's character and mine, but you might not be conscious of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really think about that at all. J'adore le Vietnam. I love Vietnam. Je trouvais qu'il y avait beaucoup de délicatesse en I tout cas. Uh, there was great uh, delicacy in the way the film is shot. People think, uh, may think uh, it's a bit raw in some way, but you must never be in a hurry when you're cooking, otherwise you hurt yourself, you injure yourself. We had to coordinate things with the camera. In fact, uh, I placed my full trust in my cook, and uh, I had great pleasure doing this. I love cooking myself, and cooking uh, for other people changes everything. Madame. Pardon, il y a une autre question ici. Est-ce que vous pouvez lever s'il vous plaît? Bonjour, Leila de Vie Independent. I'd like to react to what you just said. You have to cut things up slowly in very small pieces. There's also Club Zero by Jessica Hausner in the selection, where people talk about conscious eating, and uh, people end up not eating at all in the end. And this film is quite the contrary. It's uh, cooking, it's food, which is celebrated in the film. You have this relationship also between love and cooking. When you cook for people you love, it changes everything. I have a question for you, Trenan, and for Pierre Gagnère. The relationship between eating, cooking, and love. When someone cooks, uh, um, that uh, does one good in terms of one's senses, one's body, what can you say through cooking that you can't say through words? I'm referring to the relationship between Dodin and Eugénie. I uh, don't know whether I still love cooking, but it's something I have adored. Um, it's my link to the world. It's my link to other people. It's the way I express myself cooking. It's a long declaration of love 
a declaration to the products, of course, but to the people, who I welcome as well. And also, as I grow older, this is increasingly important, it's the relationship I create with the teams with whom I work. You can see this clearly in the film. You have the assistants, there are lots of people, and it's real teamwork. It's a, like a form of communion. It's a, a bit like a, a film that uh, you invent. There's this magical moment, and then beauty is created. What's different with the cinema is that when you put a dish on the table, um, you, uh, it's totally ephemeral. We're talking about lots and lots of dishes. You don't see the whole time needed to prepare things, but uh, it's my whole life cooking. It's my life, uh, uh, professional life, and my life as a person, as a man. I think that what uh, you say through food is something you can't put into words. In the film, there is there's a very clear metaphor Dodin has already tried everything, said everything to Eugenie in order to convince her to marry him. But she's always said no. And the real last, last link is food. And he says, maybe that will enable me to convince her. So this is a way of saying something which you can't put into words. He's tried everything. He even invented something about chewing. About He tries to formulate extremely complicated things, uh, trying to explain how it works when you eat something, how you chew on something, and it just makes a Juliette a génie laugh. So the last uh, thing he can try is food. Thank you. My First of all, thank you very much for this film. I loved it. I have a question for Juliette Binoche and Benoit Magimel. This film is very restful, and it's wonderful to see people in the film to make the most of cooking and all these emotions, but it's hard to uh, make a film and produce such a thing. Why is it important? to act uh, in art house films. These are very special films that maybe will not appeal to everyone. Well, for me, this film is a hymn to beauty, to life, to love, because uh, nature is very generous. But uh, what we do with nature, well, we have the choice to protect nature, to make even more beauty, and to create. And, and cooking is a form of creation. It transforms us. It gives us energy, the energy to love, the energy to live. I believe that coming from Hong, who comes from Vietnam, he has adopted France as his country, and France has adopted him, is very moving in fact, to see this. It's very moving for me, who is 100% French, to see this love for uh, the most refined aspects of French culture and life. For me, it's a letter of love addressed uh, by Hung to France. It's wonderful to feed the people you love, to work on the food, the raw material. It's uh, physical, it's uh, uh, delicate. It's wonderful to be able to work physically with all these foods. It is a way of expressing one's love. Eugénie always understands what he wants, uh, even if he's sometimes very difficult to understand. Throughout the film, I learned a great deal. I listened to the advisors. I learned about patience, about how to be precise in my gestures. To start with, I was in a rush. I tried to, to keep up a certain pace, but each food each uh, ingredient has to be prepared at its own pace. 
The idea wasn't to create a postcard like images. The dish turned up on the table when it was ready. People were waiting for the dish. They would then watch the dish being put on the table. They would smell the beautiful wafts coming out of the dish. There was a lot of joy, a lot of precision. We were very precise in our work, and it's very physical, touching the ingredients. All this is linked to love. And once again, one isn't always ready to cook. One doesn't always have the time. Pierre, what do you think? Well, in a restaurant, sometimes you, you sense the atmosphere, and if the atmosphere is negative, it may become very complicated indeed. But it's up to us to change the situation and make a given gesture or just uh, be extremely attentive to one's guests uh, to change the atmosphere. It's like a concert, which uh, twice a, happens twice a day. Uh, we start, and then we do things again three hours later. It's different from a film. And you have to love other people. There are some very bad tradesmen or shop owners, and, and that's a terrible thing. You need to love other people. It's a real gift to have made this film, because this film has enabled me, and I'd like to thank Hung and all the actors, it's enabled me to offer 50 years of work, which has been based on creativity and uh, technical skills. And this film totally reflects creativity, emotion, all expressed through food, but a lot of rigor, too. Silence as well. You have to listen to the ingredients. You have to listen to what they have to say, and that's wonderful. Thank you very much. I'd like to react to this emotion shared by Pierre Gagnier. I have a question for the producers of the film. What was your reaction as producers when Tran An Hung said that there would be real ingredients, real foods in the film? Uh, the logistics must have been quite complicated in terms of all the uh, fictional meals you often see in a film. I'd like to say something. The first time I met Hung, we organized a meet, and I didn't know what topic he was going to discuss in his uh, film. I love food. Morning, lunch, and evening. Uh, well, eating for me is as important as uh, films and going to the cinema. And so I invited Hung to a really good restaurant because I like to combine work and pleasure. And I saw Hung enjoying his food so much. And throughout the meal, we just talked about food. And I said to myself, well, he'll succeed with this film in an outstanding manner. And together with Hung, we talk about, talked about uh, gastronomy. Things went extremely well, very smoothly. I was sure that this project would be successfully uh, uh, conducted. What was your reaction when you were told that there would be real ingredients, real dishes? Well, we really need authenticity today, and that accounts for the beauty in the film. There's this huge generosity. One is totally immersed in the film. You want to live, to understand, and to eat these delicious dishes. And uh, at the end, you feel that you want to go out and have a lovely meal. It was wonderful to have Juliette, uh, Benoit, Tranan Hong. It's a sort of a marriage. Pierre was there, of course, to make things totally realistic and credible. We live in times where people are going too fast, and it's nice just to slow down, to relax. And through all these images, through this film, ourselves, we end up looking at the details, and we really understand how things work. So it's a, a tremendous success in all respects. A question to turn from Brazil, Rodrigo Fonseca, G show. Yesterday, while I was uh, tasting your delicious film, I felt a flavor of Truffaut, I felt a flavor of Rivette, I felt a, I felt a flavor of the great masters of French cinema that made films about love. I would like to hear your relation with the great masters that directed love stories here in France and the, their influence upon your film. 
Oh, um, I think that it's uh, it's very difficult to, to make a movie, you know, and uh, if um, uh, with this difficulty you add the fact that you uh, you are influenced by someone, it's very it's much more difficult, you know. So it's it's better to be uh, myself, and um, um, of course there, there there was one guy that I really like because he inspired my, me very much. You are uh, talking about French uh, filmmakers, right? Um, uh, I would say Jean-Luc Godard. You know, his uh, first movies, uh, it's, uh, you know, someone that uh, inspired me a lot. Yes, he's a uh, fresh, uh, he's, uh, his movies are so fresh and, uh, and, and powerful for me, yes. I, I like his lightness. Mademoiselle, Madame, là, pardon, bonjour. Bonjour, uh, Anne Wakefield, Instituto Mexicano de la Radio. Uh, it's interesting that the discussion uh, in this uh, festival has been a lot about how we are distracted and how cinema might be endangered by, you know, the, the new technologies, the digital technologies, and how we're, the public is not used, um, gets very easily distracted. It's very difficult to get their, their attention. And it seems like your film is a way of... Um, the plot or the turning point, the, the conflict is more maybe in the recipe and how you follow step by step. You cannot go from one, from step one to step 10. And um, it seems like your film is trying to do precisely what cinema is supposed to do, which is to put you in the present. It is about the present, right? Yeah. So I, um, I'm just wondering if this is <clears throat> something of what went through in to which um, there's not this conflict that we are so used to and we expect to have in films that only entertain us and make us evade. Uh, yes, I think that uh, we um, new technology is uh, just a tool, you know, and uh, it's a. Uh, it's a matter of uh, how you use it. And uh, th th it's not a threat. Uh, I think that, uh, uh, but when, when you are making a movie, um, what you need to know is the language of cinema. It, this is very important because uh, you cannot only use cinema as a tool to um, illustrate a story or a theme, uh, but it's, it's important that you give the audience the feeling of the movement of, of cinema, you know, the, you, you have to create something that looks like a, an animal in the jungle, you know, that, that works beautifully uh, in the jungle. And um, this, you need to know the language of cinema. I mean, the specific language of cinema. I mean that um, uh, if you can create some, uh, an emotion that only come from the, the, the art of cinema, then you are doing something great. You are making a movie. If you are making, a, 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 if you create an emotion by only a relate, uh, uh, rely on um, relying on, on, for instance, the death of a child, something like that, it's not enough. You know, it's uh, it's just experience. It's not expression. So when 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 you you you. Um, um, you make a movie, you have to, to know what is this art, you know, and, and this is the, the most important thing. And uh, because there is two steps, one is uh, uh, when you are making uh, the, the, the scenario, uh, you, you are building the story and the theme, but uh, you know that you have already this. Uh, but then when you, you go to the, to, to, um, to the moment where, where, where you have to film it, it's another, it's another thing. It's the bigger thing, you know. Uh, so it's it's important to uh, uh, to know this. Monsieur, bonjour. Bonjour, Medio Maïs pour We Love Cinema. Une question pour Pierre Gagnère. Aujourd'hui, uh, les émissions uh, sur le sur sur la cuisine. Of TV programs on cooking. Yet everything goes really fast. People cut their fingers. They fall down. Uh, and this, uh, in fact. Uh, doesn't depict uh, the uh, real characteristics of food, which is uh, slowness and uh, easing into things. 
do view this as a very good film on cooking. The, uh, is a film, um, one film on cooking better than another because of the way it's edited in terms of cutting things out and the pace. Well, what Tran said is very accurate. It's like cooking. Making a film is like cooking. The shooting of the film was very interesting. There was a given momentum, obviously, but there was a, a little boy uh, next to me called Michel Neuve. He's not here today. And he worked with me for 45 years, and he's just stopped now. Now, had that not had that uh, person not been there every day uh, to help us with the film, we'd never have been able to tell the story in the same way and so successfully. This person was my accomplice, so to speak. He was my uh, right hand. I uh, designed the recipes and organized the cooking, but I had I not had this uh, right-hand man with me, it would have been very com complicated. And he worked with me for 45 years, worked with me in my restaurant, and cooking shouldn't be chaotic. If it is, it means you're not good, you're no good, you're not properly organized, you're not professional, something's missing there. All this work, when it's properly done and repeated over years and years, well, that is when you realize you've got the right tools and things will last. You can give people real feeling and emotion. It means you're truly professional. A kitchen is like in a film. It can't be chaotic. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. Things collapse or explode if you don't have this rigor, this awareness of your strengths as well. You have to be very modest when working with uh, foods and ingredients uh, and the time which is passing and the public, people who come and judge you every day. You have to live up to their expectations. It's true that it's a very social activity but there is the instant as well, the passing moment when you're working with all these ingredients and you can follow your instincts. Well, that's something I do too. But if I didn't have uh, lots of people helping me and who worked with me for a long, long time, these people helped me to bring things together. Our professions, our jobs, well, you can see it in the film to make a, a dish, like in Top Chef. OK, you can make a, a dish once and be a success. But when you're a professional cook, uh, you have to do this every day. You have to go out to your garden. You have to pick the vegetables, wash them. And uh, in terms of the film, I'd like to take this opportunity to mention the fact it's rare to have so many people talking about cooking. People talk about school and learning about taste. The first image of the film, Juliette has her hands in the earth. And what do people now do? They get the children to pick the beans and the potatoes and the, the radishes. And it's, it's, it's hard work. And you have to respect all this. It's a whole chain. And this is something which is unfortunate because not enough people know this, realize it, that all these ingredients come from the earth. Before you can taste them, you have to realize that it may hurt. You have to pull them out of the ground, for example. And before the taste, you have the smell. Well, the smell comes later. Well, or yes. Yes, yes, you're right. You have the smell. And sight as well. I'd like uh, to make a comment which will amuse Hong. There's just one thing, one area where I think we weren't good. When Juliette takes the dish out of the oven, the dish isn't hot enough, and you can see that. That's the only minor detail. It wasn't hot. 
The number of utensils in the kitchen is quite incredible. Simple utensils, old utensils. There was so much common sense. You talked about Michel. Without uh, this person, it would have been impossible to make the film. He was there every day. He showed us how to go about things. He was exceptional, quite amazing. I'd like to talk about uh, Yann Kay, who's on my left, and who's the genius behind the film. She dealt with the costumes and the aesthetics of the film, and you worked uh, beautifully with Hung. Um, and in this film, you could sense this desire to lift the film and ensure that it could uh, achieve a, a maximum degree of beauty. It was an exercise based on patience, too. You were so attentive to all the details, but that is what makes the film so good. What did your work consist in? Thank you very much, Juliette. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, Benoit. I know it was very complicated at certain points in time because you really had to betray your characters and we had to keep adjusting the frames. The idea was not necessarily to make the image more beautiful. I think what was important for us uh, for whom and for everyone in the crew was to be accurate, precise. When things are accurate, they are beautiful. If, on the contrary, you try just to make a pretty image, well, it becomes a sort of a, a decor. And in all the films we do with Hung, this is something which we pay great attention to. We want to be right, precise. And because things are right and precise, the gestures are just right. The presence of carrots or cabbage, well, everything is just right. And this makes the scene authentic and the feelings of the characters as well. And that's what we're trying to say here. It's a great pleasure to hear that the film is, strikes you as very beautiful, but uh, we have to think about the real meaning of beauty, the images, what they convey in terms of emotion. It's not just a question of beauty. There's something more there. Yes, when I listened to Pierre talking about the couple uh, uh, that he forms with the advisor on the set, it's, this film is about the, is the tale of a couple. It's uh, the tale of, we have Pierre and Michel, and then the couple on the screen, and the couple uh, that I form with Yen Kei, who is so very important in my work. We have all the preparatory work, and she's always sitting next to me, and she looks and watches absolutely everything. I settle my problems, and she goes out and deals with other problems, and it's uh, a wonderful, harmonious way of working together. We've worked together for a long, long time. The film is dedicated to her, and I think this is well-deserved. This is another story that you can see in the film. I think there's a question right at the front. Hello. Thank you very much for the film. Uh, I saw this morning and my mouth still watering and uh, uh, my eyes uh, are sparkling. Uh, there is not so many di dialogues. Uh, the film is told with uh, rather with the uh, help of uh, cinematic language. However, there's like a very important dialogue at the, at the final scene. And uh, I would like to ask actors, wonderful actors, uh, um, without giving a lot of the uh, ending, uh, to share the opinion, your opinion about this importance for the uh, Eugenie to to be a cook rather than wife. Thank you very much. In fact, this film is more feminist than one might think. film is more feminist than one might think at first glance. It's hidden, this aspect of the film, but there's a strong desire on the part of Hung to uh, portray women in the right way, with the right status. 
and when we were on the set, he found it very difficult to refer to me as cook. He always said wife, and he used the tu form in French, the familiar form, and he found it very difficult to say my cook. But uh, we said, well, don't you realize that this is actually, this gives her great pleasure. And he referred to me uh, in a different way. I would have been very pleased had he said uh, colonel. Independence, find her own voice, her own path in life. That's very, very important in the film. And it's important both for uh, men and women. You need to find your rightful place, your purpose in life. That's why life is worth living, because you progress, you evolve in terms of something that may be fairly mysterious, but uh, which belongs to you. Then you can share it and, and uh, really move ahead in life. But uh, she knows she's a really good cook, and that gives her great clarity of purpose. It doesn't uh, prevent her from loving and being loved. I agree with you. It's true. The most telling phrase is, uh, where is Eugénie? She's, he's constantly looking for her. It's true that uh, I saw things in a very charnel, in a very physical way. Of course, uh, there is uh, a relationship with uh, what is uh, very incarnate, is very important. You see this in the ingredients, touching things, the physical dimension. There's a young woman who's not with us this morning, but I want to mention her, Bonnie Chorodja, who uh, portrays Pauline. And there's an amusing thing to say here. You show that uh, she chews well. And you say that. There are very few filmmakers who stress the fact that she chews things in the proper way. It's very important. When you see her chewing, it makes the spectators uh, feel like eating. They think, oh, I'd love to taste that dish too. And so I think that this scene is very important, and the character is perfect. And also, each of the characters listens so carefully to the others. They listen to sounds. They're very uh, careful about what other people feel and think. People are always curious to, to see whether people agree and think the same thing. When you know someone really well, well, I, all I needed to do was to look at you a few glances uh, were sufficient in order to get along well. And that's what's so fantastic about cooking. And it's wonderful in the film. There are very few words. But people understand each other. I'd like to add something about Benoit and the way he works. He is deeply connected with the actor he is working with. Towards the end, it's very complicated. There are lots and lots of people moving around, and there are lots of people. We had to change the set. People were moving the camera. It was complicated. And at the end, he had to say, my cook. And he said, my cook. And then he uh, goes on to say, my wife. So Benoit said, you messed up there. And he smiled and said to me, well, you understand? I knew in her eyes that she wanted me to refer to her as my wife. And that's how that final scene went. It's much better like that. It's much better the way he tells this story. Hello, my name is David Cuevas. I'm from Canada. I'll be in asking this question in English, if that's OK. First of all, you've made a stunning film. It's a film for the eyes, but also the ears. I have a question about the sound design. You keep the film primarily diegetic. You're in the scene, you hear every single sound. It's extremely sensual to a certain extent. You've perfected the sound design to create this almost binaural effect in the scape. I want to know what was your sound design concept? What was the assembly of the sounds themselves? Did you record the majority of the soundscape on set? Or did you have a sound library to help you perfect the beauty and majesty of this incredible film? Thank you. Yes, the, the sound is uh, it's a, a very important part. 
uh, of the editing. I mean, uh, I never doubt that at the end I will have a movie, you know, uh, when you edit a, a movie. And uh, so the, the, the picture part is not uh, really the challenge. The challenge is really the sound. Because for me, the sound, I, I always, uh, you know, um, uh, the, the sound is the flavor of the, the, the image. Uh, you can have the beauty uh, with the image, but the flavor, you have it with the sound. That's why the sound design, I, I, don't, I don't like using the, 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 the idea of design, but just using the right sound, you know, for the, the movie, it uh, enhances everything. In, uh, in, and in this movie, because of all these uh, sound in the, in the kitchen, uh, it was so expressive, you know, so vivid. Uh, that's why I, I thought that the music was not uh, uh, useful. That's why the movie d doesn't have music. And uh, we ha only have one at the end of the movie. But uh, for the rest, uh, you know, the sound that was made in the, in the kitchen, the sound of the nature, was uh, you know uh, enough to 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 make it everything uh, to make everything very expressive. Eh bien, ça va être sur le son d'un gigot qui crépite que nous devons nous quitter. Well, we'll have to part Il est très exactement now. midi, un quart, c'est-à-dire l'heure de déjeuner. The lamb Donc, merci de ne pas oven. aller dans les fast-foods en face du Please palais. Please don't uh, go and have a fast-food lunch. Take time to enjoy your meal.